Please give us Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. God only does what he said. And the Lord visited Sarah. Please read with me. One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. Not as Sarah wanted. The Lord did not do to Sarah as she wanted. He did to Sarah as she said. Verse 2. Same scripture. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had spoken. Listen carefully. This is already a deliverance for someone. That means every time you write a prayer request, don't you think that because you prayed on it, it will be answered. The first requirement is that you must connect every request to the scripture that gives you a guarantee that God is this is why scriptureless prayer is useless prayer it's just a dissipation of energy except if you are praying in tongues when you are praying a wordless a prayer that is not word based there is no scriptural platform for God to be committed listen to me God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity but he's moved by his word just because he has compassion towards you does not mean things will be solved he himself has chosen to submit to his word that he exalts his word above his name if someone learning this is sound doctrine this is how believers become matured all these superstitious things sometimes flying around is why a lot of people are puffed up with knowledge that does not produce predictable spiritual results there is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth are we learning? So the Bible contains promises. What has God said concerning me? God has spoken so many things concerning us. What has he said? It is your assignment to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to find it. They are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. And those who find, receive finding as a harvest for seeking. Because the Bible says the law is that everyone that seeketh, findeth. Finding is not for men of God. Finding is not for those in ministry. Finding is for seekers. If you seek, you will find. I want to rise in life and destiny. Oh God, I know I can't be a failure. What is your basis? bring forth your strong reasons what is your basis i'm tired of suffering no no that's not the basis for victory what has the bible said the bible says the path of the just for instance is as a shining light are you learning now that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that becomes your scripture of defense father on the basis of this truth and on the basis of your integrity i place a demand for the performance of this scripture in my life now you that is how to pray the kind of prayer that produces result blind scriptures lamentation will only the holy ghost will just come to comfort you because he's a comforter but as far as results listen listen as far as results are concerned believe me if you do not know how to engage scripture you may live a frustrated christian life are we together so you find in scripture promises number two what do you find every time you open scripture principles principles the second thing you find in scripture are principles the modus operandi of the kingdom this is how the kingdom operates Christianity operates based on a kingdom system and every kingdom has rules of engagement. There is a way God behaves. There is a way. For instance, in Nigeria as a federation and in many, many nations across the world, there is a way that you want, if you want to approach the president or anyone in the presidency, there is a protocol. Is that true? 
if different states want to receive their subvention there is a system a modus operandi so if you become a governor or a commissioner of finance or whatever it is you are enlightened and educated that as far as this territory is concerned this is how you obtain the things that you need to obtain failure to know it you may have a territory that has the resources but it may not reach you everybody say principles principles are called the secrets of the kingdom or the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 the bible says jesus was speaking and here's what he said because it is given unto you to know to know the word know there is not just the word awareness it's not mere awareness it's a level of intimacy is the same word that is used as a husband knowing his wife to know to so interact that you become one with the mysteries of the kingdom what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people the military for instance they operate by mysteries they have how they talk there is something that the military can say that if you are a civilian and you are not trained you may not understand what they are saying you would have to be trained in the military for that conversation to be fruitful to you so in this kingdom the bible exposes us to the mysteries of the kingdom i pray and i beseech you by the message of god that you pay attention and take serious what i'm sharing with you these are the weapons of victory we have been given in this kingdom there is no other way we command results outside of this it is not one of the ways it is the way The mysteries of the kingdom so when i open my bible hidden in stories hidden in parables hidden in riddles hidden in the psalms the five books of moses all of them reveal jesus the way there is something in the pentateuch that reveals the character of jesus and the modus operandi of the kingdom are we together when you go to the prophets major and minor there are things you find the poetic books there are revelations of jesus that you find scattered across psalms is a, a spiritual protocols for accessing different dimensions of results proverbs comes to reveal the wisdom of the kingdom as far as living and excelling is concerned you now go to the gospels where jesus himself came as the manifestation of god i've told you why jesus came to the earth jesus came to the earth not just to save us his number one assignment when he came to the earth was as a correction of our idea about god the god that people did not know because until then they had not seen him manifest bodily so there were many ideas that the prophets they depended on the interpretation of the prophets to know god they couldn't have a personal relationship because the holy spirit was not given to all it was prophet joel that said one day this formula for knowledge will be obsolete because the holy spirit will be poured upon all flesh and at that time he will give the fivefold to mature the saints but as far as personal relationship is concerned that veil will be torn are we together now are you learning yes so when jesus came he came primarily as a correction of our idea he came as a marking script so that we now compare everything the prophets told us about him with the manifestation of jesus and look you now see why the father had to approve him before he started because if the father did not approve him that meant that any other thing he did before the father spoke we can say is wrong from the time the father spoke till jesus went to heaven we know that everything he did was correct because the father spoke already that i am pleased with him so when we see the father say i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my kindness we have a right to not believe the father until we verify that statement in the life of jesus did jesus demonstrate the love of the father search the scripture so you find out that he showed compassion by feeding people physically he showed compassion by feeding people spiritually when he met a prostitute at the well he did not throw her inside the well 
is that true he sat down and had a conversation with her when he met publicans and sinners how did he behave so we can now verify that god is love because jesus manifested it once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god we have a right to say god you are a liar until we verify in the life of jesus did we see the power of god demonstrated in the life of jesus read your bible the testament is there for your vetting we see all kinds of signs and wonders we sing songs what manner of man is jesus he parted the sea he did all sorts of things so by the manifestation of the life of jesus we can safely conclude that god is all powerful because we do not see any impossibility that happened to jesus except the time when he could not do any miracle and the bible took responsibility to tell us why if the bible left us in darkness we we'll say god there is something you cannot do but the bible tells us that the reason why jesus could not do this is because of their unbelief that he himself marveled at their unbelief And the Bible, Paul himself was buttressing on that and said there still remain a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, they have not entered their Sabbath. What was the limitation? That they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Not mixed with faith. What is faith? Your conviction and the corresponding action you take to honor that conviction. They did not act on what they heard. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his person the name given to the action not just the believing they could not enter his rest and he encourages us he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did in the wilderness he says there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god are you still in church so when you open the bible can i tell you this this is the reason why believers who do not study the bible believers who do not listen to teachings believers who do not engage in the ministry of the word will not only be the first to be deceived they will be the first to be destroyed because there is no basis for your security man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is God already speaking to someone? Believe me, if I stop here tonight, I am still satisfied. Promises, principles. Why do we fail in life? Largely because of Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not neither will they understand the limitation is not God's ability the limitation is knowledge they know not neither will they understand they walk on in you now see why the worship team was shouting it as our faces that there must be light tonight and I agree with them there must be light over your destiny in the name of Jesus listen believers listen get tired of ignorance get tired of shadow boxing you must be able to know with exactitude the spiritual principles that are connected to the outcomes you desire this is what mastery is about in the kingdom and the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake everybody who gets to that final round of the olympic was a champion in his own nation yet someone still takes last in that race that means the person was a champion but not champion enough at a global scale so don't just say you are better than someone because you have two unserious christians around and you are the one teaching them by what reference do you think you are serious they comparing themselves with themselves the bible says are not wise you must raise a high spiritual bar can i tell you this those who win the 100 meters race are never trained with 100 meters no if you want to win 100 meters you train he won't stop till you look just like him he won't stop he won't stop 
Till your life looks like him Till he won't stop He won't stop Till my life looks like him You may not like what I'm saying now But brothers and sisters When the word begins to make you One day you will look at your life And you will need a telescope To look at your yesterday The difference between yesterday and today and you will stand among the overcomers i can tell you how men are made men are not made by giving useless information they are made by the word john 1 verse 3 and nothing without him was not anything made that was made so we have prophecy we have principles the third thing you find in scripture are prophecies the first promises second principles three P's the third prophecies prophecies give you an idea of the end we need to know what tomorrow looks like we need to know what the end looks like that is the cure for fear people only fear when it is unknown scripture has already told us the end of the story both for your destiny and for our time here so we can find comfort based on scripture as a child of god you know number one that you will finish well what is the basis of your confidence jeremiah 29 and verse 11 i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord god is speaking your situation is speaking you can choose who you believe Sayeth the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So it already prophetically tells you that God already knows that you have an expected end. And then at the end of time, we know how these things will be. I saw a new earth and a new heaven. For the old earth and the, and the old heaven had gone away. And then he came together with us to tabernacle in that city. Christ himself being the light of that city we know the end of time so with all the confusion and all of these things everything that is a breaking news is an old news based on scripture the Bible already told us there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars for instance but the Bible also tells us nay in all these things you are more than conqueror So when we act confident in an uncertain world, we look like fools except that our wisdom is superior because it comes from the authority of scripture. There is prophecy that backs us. It gives us hope and hope does not make a shame. You see how it is? So next time someone tells you, I'm a matured Christian, tell him I, I will not argue with you. Number one, what is Christianity about? Who is Jesus? Why is he here? Anybody who cannot defend Jesus is not even born again. Not even to talk of maturity. Number two, what are the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer? What are they? How can I know that my tomorrow is great? It's a terrible thing to live in an uncertain world. Even at death, the Bible still tells us that we are victorious. It secures us all around. For me to live is Christ. And even in death, it simply becomes for me a door to a higher and a superior realm. So in any case, we find comfort. Is that true? Yes. So you don't fear death. Why? Because in the kingdom, we call death sleeping. And they that sleep, sleep at night. When you are sleeping in the afternoon, it's called siesta because you should wake up. So they that sleep, sleep at night. They use the day to walk. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. Why? Because at that night you sleep. And there are two ways to sleep in the kingdom. Number one, you sleep in the mystery that we call death. Or Jesus Christ comes to meet you. In any case, you have slept. He told John. He said, no, 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 not everybody will taste of this death physically. But one thing for sure is those who have died and we who are alive, we will all be changed. But the protocol is that those who have died in Christ will be given that honor because they have tasted of this. So they will arise and we who are alive and remain 
the Bible says we'll be caught up with him that's first Thessalonians 4 or 5 it says comfort one another with this scripture so all around I'm just showing you the the formidability of this faith life many spiritual practices do not have security above this realm when you are gone they just say you have gone to all kinds of places but we know where we are going to is that true why will you not want to come to jesus with this kind of provisions your destiny your future your eternity everything is secured in christ this is why satan fights the gospel please pay attention this is why satan will do anything to make sure your loved ones are not saved this is why satan will do anything to make sure that you do not rise this is why satan will do anything to make sure you don't have the prosperity it takes for your comfort and for the gospel can i tell you this um I, this is not to glorify satan but you see you need to study how visionary satan is there is nothing that he does that is for itself everything he does is connected to one big goal to stop the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same ask satan why do you fight prosperity that's the same reason why do you fight the bodies of men same reason why should the woman not have a child satan does not have any business with the child his concern is that anything captured in your life please pay attention anything captured in your life becomes satan's business if he finds out that there is potential in it to reveal jesus and to glorify jesus let me repeat that means satan has no business with your job he has no business with your health he has no business with your children if he does not think there is something he need to bring glory to the name of the lord the moment satan finds out that there is something in your life that he suspects he doesn't have to wait for you to be born again he suspects that one day with this talent you have if you ever get born again he will not wait until you get born again he will begin to attack it satan is not motivated by many motivations there's something you can learn from him there is a singular motivation he's motivated by one agenda to stop the revelation of jesus christ and to stop the glorification of the same can i tell you this if god takes everything that can reveal him in us satan will pass you like this and you will beg him to come and you'll say no he will go to look for where next that glory went to so he's not just looking for you because of you if you don't understand what i'm teaching you will not even understand tonight's teaching at all who have i offended that my life is like that you will stop that kind of statement after a revelation like this you see that now because listen listen i'm not saying those who say that are bad but that's why you came to church the church is a place of enlightenment the condition for an attack is that there when satan finds out that you were created in the image and the likeness of god as a baby he pursued children you are an adult satan pursued children who could not beg they could not talk they could only suck breasts he said kill them don't wait until they grow every child was created in the image of god and i know that one day if that prophet and apostle and everybody arises we're in trouble and now you have become an adult you can use your will in partnership with the holy ghost he will not let you go easily ah but thanks be to god but thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph there will be no need for all the arsenals that are given to the believer to make for victory experientially if there was no adversary who is determined to destroy us the bible says john chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for do you know what this means my goodness do you know that i've not even started well 
we're in church god is speaking if this is all i say we'll close our bible and discuss it next week but i have to drum this thing because this is how to grow are you getting blessed the thief cometh not just let's let's deal with those first four words that means you have no business seeing the thief if there is nothing that is worth stealing nothing that is worth killing nothing that is worth destroying you get the idea now that means the thief is so selfish if you ever see him he comes to you as a verification that there is something in your life that is worth stealing killing and destroying every time you see satan come around you he has already confirmed to you that you are not ordinary this is what the bible is saying hear me that means if without engaging the weapons of victory you are free from satan it means something is wrong with you your freedom should not come from any negotiation with him your freedom should come by superimposing dominion that means if satan sees you without engaging the weapons of victory he should attack you that is proof that you were created in the image of god there are many people who are not facing any attack because they are cold they are lazy they are unserious they have checked you and found out that you don't have any relevance as far as kingdom comes concerned it's not because you are special you are not praying you are not fasting you don't know the lord you are not serious and yet you are not attacked don't be flattered the devil has found that he's focusing on those who can come and save you before he comes to you I was glad when they said unto me you see that church is a good place it truly is please sit down so the thief cometh not but for to steal please give it to us again to kill and to destroy Jesus contrasts it and says I am come that they may have and they may have it more look up there is a difference between life and abundant life oh what is getting me into this thing this night life and abundant life listen carefully by the way well since this is koinonia let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of god is coming the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting there is a listen i won't say this anywhere this is this is home and god is training us are we together yes we must be thoroughly furnished sometimes i'm, I'm not i don't mean to insult you but but just listen to if if he's to laugh when he's laughable all of us know but some of these shout most times people who do these things are not getting it I'm saying most times not all the time and please don't feel bad I'm not I'm not this is a family no one condemns anyone but it's just a it's just an honest honest word of caution hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Worry. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom to faith, subdued kingdoms. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God bless you, Ma. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around. Where was I? I was cautioning, I was cautioning and, and calling for diligence as the word of God. Listen, two people acted this way in Jesus' days. Mary and Martha. Is it in your Bible? Remember the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it mary sat quietly and was listening here's what jesus said martha martha you are worried and offended about so many things but he says this one thing one thing is needful and this mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet now please look up 
because it is true that this kingdom operates by knowledge number one because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God number three because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious and that formula is the Word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit in partnership with gifts men and women of God who he has sent are we together now yes that when God grants you access to a spiritual family God grants you access to spiritual voices God grants you access to scripture he grants you access to the Holy Spirit he has supplied to you the weapons of victory the men and the women of God interpret scripture they instruct you according to Jeremiah 3 15 in knowledge and in wisdom that is their assignment to feed you to give you that spiritual nourishment are we together so they give you understanding they give you knowledge the Word of God opens you up the Holy Spirit comes to back you among the many things that the Holy Spirit does he is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit what is the assignment of the anointing I have taught you here the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the Word of God does not look like a lie so if there is no word that proceeds the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of Jesus as revealed in scripture so when the Bible says God heals now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true if God says I am able to lift men you see why the anointing follows the word this is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing there must be a statement that you must put on ground first something the Bible says should be done then the anointing you can beckon on the Holy Spirit now just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations and there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this why because they were not methodically discipled they were not methodically mentored hallelujah so everything that we share week in week out uh, among other factors spiritual arsenals that are equipping you why are they equipping you so that number one you have enlightenment knowledge but number two so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results why are your results important John chapter 15 and verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 this is why you need results in your life herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples why do you need results in your life Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 the Bible says you are the salt of the earth it says is that true the salt of the earth that means you add value and you preserve your territory you are salt you need that result it then says that you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world there are names that are exclusive to God alone man cannot claim that name but when it has to do with light both God and man are light there are names that he freely shares with us one of it is he is the son of God we are sons of God one of it is his light we are light Are we blessed do you know why I believe the Holy Spirit just took me this route because everything that we teach in this house by God's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned when you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth they, this is where carnality 
comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lust in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy but when it is brought in perspective then you see that jesus is glorified jesus is revealed hallelujah can we teach tonight now father open my eyes and let me see please lift your voice and pray for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I felt very strongly stirred. By the way, our series on the various graces, there's one more left on love, but I suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of. There is a grace that can cause men to love God and to love men. It is a grace that is at work in this house, and um, but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming. Is that true? tonight very briefly and then we pray i'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness please i pray that you pay attention this is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you your loved ones and those who are connected to you it is important that we learn the ways of god the bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in christ everyone born of god and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in christ in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general then said i lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god that means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes that everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as god God's predeterminate counsel is concerned. No one walking on the earth is useless. No one walking on the earth, regardless how you arrived here, provided you made it here, there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you. If you're with me, say amen. amen.